Welcome to today's free code count tutorial videos. Today we're going to be doing sum all prime numbers. And if you haven't already signed up here and come join me. And if you haven't solved this, I highly recommend you try solving it first before you watch this video. All right, now let's click on the link and let's read the directions. A prime number is a whole number greater than one with exactly two divisors, one and itself. For example, two is a prime number because it is only divisible by one and two. In contrast, four is not prime since it is divisible by one, two, and four. Rewrite sum prime so it returns the sum of all prime numbers that are less than or equal to the number. Let's copy this code, bring it to our editor. All right, so let's review what prime numbers are. Like they said, prime number is a number that it is only divisible by one and two. What does divisible mean? It means uh, it divides evenly. So two divided by one is two, uh, and two divided by two is one. Uh, so one and two are both divisible for two. Uh, for four, uh, three is not, uh, four is not divisible by three, for example, because four divided by three is not a whole number. However, four is divisible by two, because four divided by two is two. And here are a couple of rules. Number one, the, the actual number one is not a prime number. The lowest prime number is two. And as a matter of fact, two is the only even prime number that exists. And the opposite of a prime number is called a composite number. And a composite number is pretty much not prime, meaning, for example, four is a composite number because the divisors that it has is not only one and itself, but it also has other numbers in between. As a matter of fact, if a prime number divides a number, then that number by definition is a composite number. And we're gonna use that fact, we're gonna use that truth to solve this problem today. So what we have to do is let's see what we have to output. It says rewrite some prime, so it returns the sum of all prime numbers that are less than or equal to the number itself, the parameter that we are given. So most likely we have to do a loop. And what we need is we need a list of every single prime number that is less than or equal to that number. So most likely, how are we gonna build these prime numbers is we're probably gonna use an array and build up the array. All right, so let's think of some edge cases. What are some edge cases? The edge case that I'm thinking of is what if this parameter, this num, is for example, uh, less than two. What should the output be if it's less than two? So for example, if num is less than two, what should we return? So how many prime numbers are less than or equal uh, less than two? For example, one. One is the smallest integer less than two. How many prime numbers are less than or equal to one is zero. So I will say in this case, just return zero. Now that we have taken care of the edge case, let's go on with the problem. So now we could assume that our number is either equal to two or greater than two. And let's do this. I'm gonna do a for loop. Uh, and before I do the for loop, like I said before, we're gonna be building up a list, an array of all prime numbers. So I'm gonna initialize that array with an empty array from the beginning. I'm gonna use const variable, const, uh, prime numbers, I will call it, and it will start up as an empty array. Now we want to loop through all the numbers starting from two all the way to up to and including the number parameter. So let's do that. For that i is equal to two, i while i is less than or equal to num, and we're gonna increment it by one every single time. And what are we checking? We are checking if our current number in our iteration, is that a prime number or not? In other words, if that's a composite number, which is the opposite of a prime number, we're not gonna push to this array, but if it's not a composite number, then we are going to uh, push into this array. So how do we test if the number right now is a composite number or not. As I said before, composite numbers are built up of prime numbers that are less than itself. So what we have to do is grab, let's assume that this array right here is filled up already. We're gonna iterate over this array 
and see if any of those numbers divides our current number that we're looping over. Remember, our current number that we're looping over is i. So let's do this. Uh, for let p, I'm going to use p for prime. Uh, what should we set it equal to? No, not p. Let's just use, it's not good, but I'm going to use a for of loop here. We're looping over the prime numbers here. I think for of loop is more appropriate. Uh, so we're going to say for const p of prime numbers. So p would represent all the numbers that is inside here. And we will say if the number in question right now that we're iterating over is divisible by p. And how we do that? How do we check to see if it's divisible or not? It is divisible if i mod p is equal, triple equals to zero then it is divisible, meaning i has to be a composite number then. We will say, uh, we have to say, hey, this is a composite number. But in order to do that, we had to declare a Boolean variable. So I'm going to do that before my for of loop. And I'm going to say, let uh, is composite, is composite. And should we initialize it as true or false? I'm going to initialize it as false. And the moment we get a prime number that uh, is divisible, that in which i is divisible by, we will say is composite is true. And the moment we grab the first prime number that it is divisible by, we don't have to continue on with this for of loop. So what we can do is just break out of it. That will save us some time, computing time. Now, after our for of loop, where we're checking to see if our number is composite or not, our is composite boolean will either be true or false. So we will do this. If is composite is true, shorthand notation for that is just if is composite, because it's a boolean, then we don't want to do anything. We just want to continue. Else, if it's not composite, instead of just continuing, we'll say, if it is not composite, that means it's a prime number, we want to append a push to our prime numbers array, like so. Now, I just want to test our code a little bit, and let's see if we console log our prime numbers after all of our loop. By the way, what type of, uh, what big O is this for loop right here? The answer is is a is a quadratic. Uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It's o to the n squared because we have a for loop here and we have another for loop inside. So it's o to the n squared. Uh, let's run this. And the prime numbers we get, uh, the function call we made was some primes ten. All the prime numbers less than or equal to ten is two, three, five, seven. So it appears to work. Um, now, what we have to do is we just have to return the sum of all the prime numbers that we have in this array. And let's do this. Erase the console log. We will say let sum is zero. And we will say for, I'm going to do another for of loop of our prime numbers, const p of prime numbers. We're just going to add to our sum the p value. And after that has all been added up, we're going to return some, and hopefully that will give us the right answer. So here it says some prime 10 should return 17. Let's see if that is the case. And I get nothing because I didn't console log the result. So let me console log the result of this. And we do get 17. Now let's see if free code camp likes the solution. Run the tests, and we pass. So let's now consider some ways we could refactor this. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is refactor this part right here. So here we're doing another for loop because we want to add up all the numbers that is within this prime number. But there is a shorter hand to do this, and it is using the reduce method. So I'm going to say let sum is equal to not 0, but I am going to say let sum is equal to prime numbers which is an array, and we're going to call invoke the reduce method on it. 
Now a reduce method uh, takes in two parameters, one a function and the second one an initial value of what's called an accumulator. Accumulator is pretty much it store it saves its a value and takes it on to its next iteration. But this is going to be pretty simple. So let me just write this. The, uh, within the first parameter, which is a function, our first per, uh, argument is the accumulator. And the second one is a number that we're iterating over. In this case, I'll call it P. And I'm going to put an error function here. And I'm just going to say the result is going to be accumulator plus P. Now, on the default value of our accumulator, I'm going to say it's zero. So now let me explain to you what's going on here. Accumulator is a memory function. The return value of this function, callback function in here, is what the accumulator, uh, the value that the accumulator takes in the next iteration. So in our case, what were our prime numbers for this example? Our, uh, let me just write it here. Our prime numbers for this example is equal to two, three, five, seven. So what this reduce function is, accumulator first starts out as zero because we initialized it as zero here. Now, our first P is two. So what accumulator then becomes is accumulator plus P as we wrote here, which is accumulator is currently zero plus the prime number that we're iterating over. So accumulator now becomes two. Then uh, accumulator before it was two, because we just had two here. And our next iter uh, P is three. So our new accumulator value is five and so on. So it constantly does this until we get 17. Let's see if this gives us the right answer. And because I'm making this variable and returning it right away, our shortcut is just to grab this and return that value instead of declaring the sum value. Let's try this and we do get 17. Another thing we can do is check out what we're doing for this end condition here. We're saying if num is less than two, return zero. There's an easier way to do this. Uh, let's say num, our number parameter was one and let's ignore this part. So we will go here, we will have an empty prime number array and we're doing this for loop here. For let i is two, while i is less than or equal to, remember our number was one and i plus plus. Because i, which begins at two, is already less than one, uh, is already greater than one, I, I mean, this for loop will never run. So our prime number array will always be empty. And when we get down here, because prime number is empty, our accumulator, the result of this will just be zero. Let's see if that works for, if I write one here, let's see if we get zero. Yes, we do. So we didn't need this if condition. So we could shorten our function like so. All right, so I was gonna show you guys some other ways to solve this problem, but I was gonna get into very heavy mathematical territories, but I don't think we need to do that. So let's see if we call cam nice solution. Let's bring it over here. Run the test. There we go. Hey guys, thank you so much for joining me again today in this algorithm. Today we did some uh, primes. Tomorrow we'll be doing smallest common multiple. So if you haven't already, please click like and please subscribe to my con to my channel, and check out. Try to do the smallest common multiple one on your own first, and come join me the next time we meet, and we'll tackle this problem. Again, thank you so much for joining me, and have a good day.